Hey guys, Rex here, Hippies 101. <laughs> Were you raised by hippies? And uh, if so, you, you might have noticed the folly of that system. And um, I'm here to assist you to have empathy for the hippies, but also give you a full picture of what's going on so that you can escape the grasp of the hippies, but not repeat the same mistakes from a different angle. Roger? Roger. Okay, here we go. You guys ready for this deal? So over here, I drew a picture. We got all kinds of stars in the sky, different colors, different kinds of stars. And we got the love up here, right? And we have people across the bottom of the earth here, across the face of the earth. Down here on the right side, you can see, oh man, we have industrious, productive little cities and towns. Uh, everyone's got their happy little houses, their white picket fences, they're working hard, they, you know, good society, modern society, right? Modern society was constructed to sustain what the people who constructed this modern city to what, what they perceive to be love, okay? And so they believe that their survival system um, to, to uh, sustain what they perceive to be love is by building a city, nice valley here, see? protected in the shadow of this mountain here. And okay, here we go. And you know, on the outskirts of the city, kind of out here, you have some other people that hang out around here a lot because they perceive the best way uh, to, you know, love is to come out here and have more clean access to view the different stars of the sky. They can, uh, you know, have um, more more of the focus on, on the night sky and, and see what's being transmitted from the heavens and so they seclude themselves from the city out here, still on the right side of the mountain, okay? And they are executing, to the best of their ability, what they perceive to be love. So they're shooting over here, okay? Looking at the looking for love from this perspective. People in the city are looking for love in this perspective, okay? On the left side, this is the right side. Now on the left side, we have a whole different kind of society of people. Here's the deal. And say that a kid grew up in this industrious city. Like, for example, in the 50s, right? In the 50s and the 60s, people came home from World War II. And they had experienced the horrors of war and all that kind of stuff. And now they just want peace. And they want to establish what they perceive to be the opposite of war. Because they saw all the cities over there burned to the ground. Well, geez, that's terrible. Let's rebuild the cities because that's what love must be. It's the opposite of destruction, right? We'll rebuild these cities and make the white picket fences even wider than they were when they were in the war that, you know, got blown up there. All the bombed out French villages, bombed out, uh, you know, whatever in Europe got destroyed, right? So now they rebuild the city here when they come home, bigger and brighter and, you know, plastic, fantastic uh, you know, where like you polish the sidewalk and you get a brand new car and you wax it and you work really hard. Papa's working at the factory, comes home, reads the newspaper, mom makes him a turkey dinner and the kid gets all these, you know, shiny toys. And what the parents over here did was they perceived love to be here, which, okay. Because long ago they heard, they heard that love was up here above the mountaintops, right? In this guy. And that the, through love, you could have access to the ethereal, the outer space stuff, the communications that came from above. So when they looked at it, they said, wow, because they were receiving transmissions of some kind from here. So this was seemingly transmitting love to them because they looked at it. Wow, there's a heart here. And historical records had verified, yes, at one time there was a heart of love here above the mountains, right? Where you could have better access to the sky. So from the perspective of their city, they're receiving love in this fashion. Unfortunately, it's plastic, it's materialistic, it's fake, it's full of death. And the children that were raised by those parents, as much as the parents tried to inscribe into them the importance of the principles of this city, to align itself with the love, the heart, because this felt right in their heart to raise their children in a place that wasn't a bombed out war zone like World War II because they came home from the war and all the boomers, right? Grew up in a, a generation where they were absolutely focused in on the heart, okay? But what they didn't realize is that from this angle, what was truly being transmitted from back here? 
a couple things, depending on the exact alignment of what they're aiming at. The cash star. Love equals cash. To, because cash sustains you. Business sustains you, right? And so, here we go. There's the cash star, and it appears to be love, right? And so they're like, okay, we're going to work hard and build a really nice, you know, life for our children, a.k.a. buy a new refrigerator, a new washing machine, a new car, right? And what they maybe didn't realize is this was being transmitted from here, right? Because there's all kinds of bait and things that this thing will hide behind, whether it be bad intent, okay? Because like, okay, this is literally like just bad, right? Or good intent, which okay, you know, money is a form of sustainment, right? And that's that's uh, not bad in of itself. It's benign. It's just a tool. And there are bad intents, like okay, they were you know self-important, and they wanted to be special. So then they're zooming in on this star, actually. Well, what was truly transmitting? Something else was transmitting a signal of disguising itself as love in the form of either cash or self-worship, whatever it might be, okay? Because we don't know the intents of people's hearts. And that's what they have. And because of this system, the children, especially the ones that were blessed with discernment, the little kids that grew up in this beautiful city over here, having all the material possessions they ever need, but they didn't really get to know their parents all that well because their parents were working their asses off trying to be a slave to the cash or whatever it is, you know, you got to beat the Smiths or the, the Johnsons next door, right? They have a new car, you got to beat them. So that's the other star, the other transmitter, either the cash transmitter or the self, you know, you got to keep up with the Joneses type deal over here and that whole generation of the boomers getting raised. And so they were empty. They didn't have parents because their parents were busy working to achieve what they told the kids was, oh, I love you is why I do this. Because through love, I'm doing the cash and whatever it is. And see? But you see, this, this sort of alignment was actually resulting practically in death. I feel dead inside. So these kids being disgruntled with their what they perceive to be empty relationship because they can see the fruit of the system. It's fake, it's plastic, like that Black Hole Sun song done by Soundgarden, that music video. Black Hole Sun, won't you come and wash away the pain, Black Hole Sun, right? Yeah, and they show like the 50s layout just melting and how hip hypocritical it is. The kids with the magnifying glass, the rich, spoiled kids of the earth having everything they need but being empty inside. So they migrate over here they might make a quick stop at church, but a lot of them run way the heck over here, okay? And they become hippies. Those kids of the boomer generation ran over here and became hippies. And they built little geodomes and little dome structure, uh, adobe huts, and planted trees. And they're like, okay, we're on the opposite side. This, oh, wow. From this view, we don't have all the city smoke and the noise of the car horns and all this from nature. I can see that love is in nature and in like all this other stuff that the hippies cleaved on to. So they're seeing this, right? So they're seeing, oh, the nature. Well, nature's not bad. It's benign. It's not a terrible thing. But like, what if there's a transmission over here as well that was broadcasting an attraction to the hippie children knowing they're seeking a better view of this because they couldn't see it from inside the buildings of the city, but they want this that was described to them from the parents. And so they ran over here to get a better perspective on love, man. It's all about love. She loves you, yeah, 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 or whatever, right? In the words of uh, Lennon, she loves you, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so here we go. We got the uh, what they perceive from this angle. Well, they're looking at the same thing from a new angle, and what happens? What are the fruits of this? Well, the, if this is benign in of itself, because nature is, is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. It's actually evidence of very good things, but it's not really 
transmitting in of itself actively like this will use this as disguise and hide behind nature and other things to transmit that signal from the position of your angle to go through this. The heart is desperately wicked. Who can trust it? And, and deceitful above all things. Why? Because your alignment is pointing over here now. You see the heart, but what's, what's in, what is that really in? Heart is in nature, or is it in, all of a sudden, that intellectual superiority of the hippie generation? Which leads to the fruits of what? That intellectually superior attitude, the my poop don't stink attitude of the hippie generation, because they got away from this after all. This is so empty. You guys are so terrible. So now they're, they're actually a lot of times lobbing stuff on this trajectory, supposedly through here, to attack these guys. And then later, these guys return fire. Boom! Out of love for what is right. Oh, I will show you that the hippie ways are wrong. So they're all aim they're all using this as an excuse to either align themselves with where they perceive you know something in this direction or to attack each other as a sighting mechanism to lob stuff over this mountain, right? Upon which the the love was you know known to be, and so they're launching stuff at each other. Well, okay, so the mainstream hippie ways are not good. Let's just get away from that. So now you want some of this little mister? Okay, this is my best attempt to keep you busy for 10 minutes. Here you go. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so sometimes people from this village, they're disgruntled because they just see like alcohol and, and sex and drugs and rock and roll trying to fill the void of what they perceive to be here. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, you know, the hippie problems because it's empty in a different way, man, right? And so they might migrate over here and become, uh, what's the Mr. Fan, Mr. Fantastic, or what's the uh, the movie with the communist hippie guy that moves into the woods, uh, Mr. Yeah, something like the Captain Fantastic. Where okay, we're gonna just like really get closer to the to the original love man, and it's like gonna, now we're shooting like more up to the true true love deal. Now we're really with nature. Well, guess what? Same problem. These things are mobile, these transmissions. There's a lot of different things that can transmit stuff to you to give you an spiritual experience, by the way. And they'll navigate to wherever you're pointing out in the wrong direction. And it might be closer to the original perspective because they heard stories about how love was above this mountain, right? Well, we're, by, we're under the mountain now, man. Now we got a better view because we can see that we are above the mountain and so we're sort of below it, so that'll be good. And guess what? They use that, the relationship closer to the mountain of truth, if you will. They use this as leverage and an excuse to really go off the deep end and really weaponize what they find to be closer to the truth here, but they're still missing because they're, they're not directly on the mountain, see? Likewise... Some of these people migrate over here because they're like, man, the city's noisy. Let's go to church. Oh, man. Wow. Now I have a clearer view of love because I'm in the wilderness. Oh, look at this. Oh, the church was actually about cash. Well, I don't want to. I see that. So the love was actually about cash. Well, hold on. Let's leave church. Let's start our own conclave. We just left church. That'll show them. <laughs> Let's see what's going on. Now they're in love with themselves again. I am God. We're not going to let Preacher Bob tell us what to do. The real love is getting outside of the church and starting our own stuff. Okay, now what are you doing? Now you're doing, now you're worshiping yourself again. Likewise, you have all your radicals come out of here, and there's people all along here, right? Yeah, well, how about the guy who actually read the instructions? Because he was like, where did this idea of love actually come from being around this mountain? Is that just flowery language? Is that just a metaphor? Or is there something literally true here? Okay. Now, question before we move on. Were the people, the boomers, that came back from World War II and wanted to rebuild civilization cleaner and more, like, it's all about clean and, you know, it, riches and the opposite of, of war, right? Building things. Was their intent bad? 
No, they wanted, they loved their kids, you see, but they didn't understand because someone, and usually this is inherited. Someone gave them an axis. Okay, you had a Y axis, an X axis, and a Z axis. Sort of vertical alignment, right? So according to their moral compass, they're pointed at the heart. They do not discern the difference between the truth and the heart. When they glance in this direction from their perspective, they kind of see that the truth is above where the mountain is and that's where the heart is, so they're aiming at the heart. And if they aim just at the truth from this perspective, they're going to miss the heart of it because they're not in, they either get one or the other, the truth or the heart, right? So what do most people do? And some of them shoot over here to get the truth, but they do it heartlessly. Why? Because they haven't moved their ass out of this town yet. They are too comfortable here to move their ass out of this town so they can get alignment with both. But the, the, the system that was handed to them on their moral compass, the best they can tell is they're aligned perfect and they would do whatever they would have to do, whether it be whiskey and the town dance or sports games and my, my, kid, my kid's so good at football. Hey, television, that's a good idea. Let's just endlessly watch television because that'll numb the empty feeling because we are doing so hard to work from here and every Sunday we come over here and now we're shooting at this. Yep, yeah, we're shooting at this. And they have to re, what, guess what? They have to realign themselves on Sunday. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? That this alignment was different. What is that? I don't know. That this deal was different than this deal because if you have to change your sights all the time, if you have to physically come out of the city to get aligned to what you perceive to be the heart and you're still missing it and then you come back, guess what? You're exhausting yourself. Now you really need to watch TV. What's, hey, Super Bowl. You guys excited about Super Bowl? Oh yeah, yeah I love Super Bowl. You know, that'll distract me from how this was still empty. Uh, happy family, happy family. Going to church from here like, oh, it's all about love people. And they're picking up all different kinds of transmissions from bad things and decent things, but not from the right perspective. Not from the right perspective. Likewise, same inverse is true over here, right? These kids who came over here, now they're hippies. If your parents were hippies, they knew the folly of this. And they are going to protect you from the ideas of the crazy, dominant, white, whatever the hell, you know, Christian family traditions, because that's what they come out of, and it's all about money and self-righteousness. They could detect these stars. And now from their perspective, when they look up and see what they were really focused on, they can clearly see, because this ain't in the way now, from a new perspective, they can clearly see they were worshiping themselves. How hypocritical. They were worshiping you know, money, how hypocritical is that? And all these other doodads, like, oh, white picket fence, you got the dog chained to the uh, tree in the backyard and the structure and all this. They were aiming at the wrong thing. I can tell you that love is over here. So then they instill into their children the moral compass the best way they can see fit. Here's their axis. The, you know, vertical axis is best they can tell and their Y and X axis, right? So these things are like pointed in conflict with each other. The hippies and the whatever these, the cowboys, right? The hippies and the, you know, God, uh, you know, God and country type people. Like, it's all about God and country people. Fly the American flag in the front yard. And these guys are like, no, man, it's about nature and love and peace. We need all to like get along and like smoke, uh, you know, what is that stuff called? Peyote. Okay, so like their deals are in conflict because they're like aiming and they're going to argue 50 million times or both aiming at the heart and it's not done in ill intent. The little kids that grow up in here, now what do they see? They not only see the malfunctions that the kid that their parents came from, right? They can see that from over here because they were trained on that, but they also now see the folly of their parents aiming at all this hippie shit. It's about love, man, for nature and stuff. And, like, the self-righteousness of being, like, smarter than everyone else. Hey, 
Guess what? I'm into philosophy. Oh, man, here we go. That's a bad one. I'm into the love of man's wisdom. I'm a philosopher. And the kid, if it's a discerning child, will be able to see, my parents are worse than my grandparents. So then the kid might run back over here. So then the child of the hippie, here's the tragic story, where do they go? Oh, my parents are hippies. I'm going back to grandma and grandpa. But then they know. They work here. They bust their ass for their kids, the grandkids of the hippies, gen millennials or gen X or what do you call them? Gen Z, right? Whoever it is, right? Gen X, gen Z, millennials, all the new ones after the boomers. They come over here, the kids of the boomers come over here and now they're muddied with both. They have tragic experience of the folly of this position and the folly of this position, but they sure as hell don't want this. They need a break from this because they were raised in this. And the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. So they walk and they navigate around this mountain uh, where the love they know historically has been. And then they go here, see? And now what are they doing? They're trying to realign. But what the problem is, they realize that there's something weird going on. This compass is pointed here now. Because what? Because they inherited the idea of either love or righteousness, self-righteousness. But now they're seeing it that they're doing it from a different perspective again. Wait a minute. From the industrial perf perfection of 1950s boomer flat plastic fantastic industrial revolution type stuff, which is, goes before that, because these cycles happen many times in history, right? And you can always switch back and forth, and we're continuously shooting completely around the target. Like, well, miss, 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 miss. So now your poor son of the hippies ran back over here, and they see the folly of their parents. But they can't identify it. And like, dude, like, what, like, I love them, right? And I know they're trying to show me what they perceive to be right. But like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> How can you possibly love your parents for having a screwed up moral compass? Their morals are different. Yeah, well, see, your morals are back to what your grandparents are now. But that's still missing. Because guess what? Now you are back your grandparents one because you could see the folly of your your hippie parents flawed morals but now you're over here and guess what you're aiming at the same targets maybe a new position so it, you got to do something new different oh well my grandparents were slightly off they're hitting this one see my grandparents are were navigating through this star of transmission so now i'm going to aim over here and i'll hit this one because it's closer well shit it's still the wrong deal right so the best way to honor your parents and your grandparents who are aiming for this and never hit it. The best way to honor thy mother and father because they were aiming in love for you to give you a life of love from the best they could see from the folly of this bullshit position. And then they ran away. They got away from their lives. Think of the love of them running away from their lives to establish a hippie colony so they could give you an experience of what they perceive to be love, only to tragically end in like what most hippies end up doing, just like meltdown, right? Or worse, they like double down on that stuff and then they, it's like pure folly to anyone with an IQ that can toast bread lightly. When you step outside of it and you look back at it, you're like, wait a minute, like sitting around, grabbing each other, talking about how smart we are all day. And these guys, oh, we're talking about how valued we are all day. And how hard of workers we are. Yeah, well, you guys are hypocrites. And you're, you know, so they're arguing back and forth. So the intelligent kid will want and will recognize, hey, there's a transmission here that they're picking up from the truth. And the truth says, honor thy parents. And they're like, how in the hell is that possible? Because these ones were missing this, but they but they want to do, they, they want to get more transmission here but they're not be able to identify how to honor their parents and their grandparents and still achieve love so they can raise their kids not in this freaking, by the way, if you haven't noticed, yeah, World War II stuff is happening again. And this is all going to burn down for sure. Guaranteed. Look at that smoldering ash black mushroom clouds and fire and horror definitely on the way okay so they don't they can see this 
folly going to repeat again? And if they go out here, well, then they're back right where they started, right? You know what you got to do, man? Is you got to come over here, and usually there's some kind of stream. Maybe it flows on this side of the deal. Maybe I don't know where you're at on your branch, but you got to cross the stream at some point. So you got to walk down through the water, and once you get the water to clean you, now you can navigate. Maybe maybe you walk straight past this stream and you, you cross the, the Red Sea or whatever, right? You cross the Red Sea and you come out. And now what do you have to do? Why did no one sit on this mountain? Because it's lonely, <laughs> sort of. It seems lonely from all the people are here on the broad path and all the hippies are here on the, the you know, the whatever other side path that's broad, right? Because really, this freaking civilization loops all the way back in the background behind that mountain. And there's encampments all around it to where it's the same damn village. You're just on the left side of the village or the right side of the village. But you're not on the mountain. You're you're camped below it because the closer you get to this, you realize there's like, you know, shade and protection and stuff. And you can see a better view of where that heart historically was. So people don't travel this very much. But you got to climb a narrow, treacherous path way up here, and it takes a while to get there. And then once you are here, huh, now let's aim at the love. <laughs> Message received, transmitting data back. Oh, and it scatters when it hits a pure heart and fills the sky with beautiful illumination and wham, you get the download of everything else the way it was meant to be intended to be. And now because you saw the folly of this side of the fence and this side of the fence, realizing it was one giant city all not being on the mountain, well, let's go to where the guy who found this thing was. What's this? A V. The ten. The ten the ten laws of love. Man, like, we're gonna have church laws. Okay, well, how many is that? Well, we erased a few commandments we don't like, so subtract those. And then we added 475,000 commandments on how to brush your hair, where to put the organ, what side of the freaking stage the flowers need to be, and what time, who's in charge, like what's our government of our church. We'll just make up our own laws. We're going to subtract all these ones and make them up. Well, you missed. Right? Or over here. Now you are here. And when you hand this system... Z axis actually being pointed up, okay? And the X and Y axis, right? Guess what? Now your X and Y axis, okay? Physical dimensions, right? Because you're aligned properly. You're now receiving this. Now, guess what? Because this is fully charged and operational and, and the, the communication is spreading and illuminating the sky above you, now you can disseminate and help this is how you honor your parents. And into the future, your progeny. Does that make sense? You become properly vertically aligned in the true heart of the creator who gave us rules of love. And if you just like let go of your these guys' ideas, the communists and the church people both agree on being misaligned. They're aligned on themselves. Because they're not aligned on this, and it doesn't take that much to miss. What if you're halfway up the mountain? Man, you're going to be so convinced that you're aiming right at that star, but you just missed it because you're not perfectly aligned. This transmission only comes into full focus and function. This transmission only comes into full focus and function when your vertical alignment is perfect. And that just means you have to, you have to like, listen. You have to listen and obey. Your feet have to move you up this mountain. You have to walk here, okay? I believe. You believe in what? I believe that we have access to the stars and the love. 
Yep, you do have access. You are on the mountain. You can walk right up here and you're not going to get shot off by the security. Well, then walk up here and go here. I believe. Okay, so you, what the, if you believe so much, why are you not up here? Why are you over here still? Well, you see, I believe in the love. Okay, so you can technically understand and believe this and still live over here. Guess who's the most miserable person on the earth? The dude here who knows about this and believes in the love through the proper deal, but his ass did not move his feet to walk up this path. Now you're here with the knowledge of what it could be and you're not there because you are serving the same God that was over here that your grandparents did that you hated so much. Or the miserable hippie. Hey man, I'm just gonna hang out with my hippies. Oh, I know the actual truth, but I'm gonna come over here. Well, guess what? You're still, you are aware of the folly and the sin of this and this. You have to literally walk and and you have to camp out here, man. You have to camp out here in the mountain. You have to you have to come up here. He's gonna hook you up. And then, well, but it's lonely up there. Well, then bring your bring your people. Hey guys. Let's all go here. Oh, awesome. <laughs> How do you honor your mother and father who are hippies or crazy people on either side of the spectrum? Because they, their moral compass is messed up. Well, you have to honor them by, okay, so you, you have a moral compass, but are you using it to navigate to where you're supposed to go? Walk over here. You can take them by the hand. I don't like it over there. Okay, well, I'm going to go up here and you watch this. And you come up here and and it's going to shine off and blind them. It's good. The, what reflects off of you coming down through here when it hits when it hits your being, who you are. When this deal reflects from the truth, it'll hit you and it'll blind them. Yeshua, Jesus told us, "Hey, do not hide the light bulb. Who puts a lamp on, under a basket? Move it up on top of the hill to illuminate the path." So you go and walk the path and get vertical alignment from the mountaintop and shine your light so that everyone can see. And those, and, and don't be friendly. You don't need to judge them. Did you know that your compass is wrong? Oh, they already know their compass is wrong. Now, they're going to feel resentment if you just smash their compass on the ground that grandpa inherited to them. Or that they spent all this time trying to instruct you on. How about let's not even talk about this messed up compass. How about you demonstrate the actual compass? The actual real compass. How about you demonstrate it? Then they will see, oh, that kid's hooked onto something weird. They'll snoop around. They'll wonder, hey, can I come over and visit? Yeah. Oh, it's pretty bright. I'm going to go back home. Yeah, I know it's really bright. Okay, then they'll get thirsty. They'll get closer. Oh, man, it's too scary. They'll get closer, and then a voice comes, like, oh. They get scared, they run away. I mean, read the story in Exodus. <laughs> it literally happened. The entire camp came down here, and it was so scary. The whole mountain was shaking with power that they got they thought they were gonna die. They're like, How about you just tell us what to do? You are up there, you're tight with them, you're standing here. We'll just do what you say. All right, well, then you know, you're gonna have to camp out right here. <laughs> you're gonna have to camp out right here then, okay? Because I'm not coming all the way down here. And be a new operating system. So love your love your parents and honor the best way to honor your hippie parents or your if you have parents that were too far on this side or this side, left or right, doesn't matter. Acknowledge that they had a compass and they tried to train you to seek this because they love you. That's a form of love that's no bullshit. I guarantee you your parents love you. If they kept you alive, they love you. If they know anything about that. Because that is one of the most basic connections. that the, the true love between husband and wife, if someone has that, or the love between a parent and their child, that's this and this right there. So they understand the reality. And they try to give you a model, a, a working model to work with, that there is a compass, the concept of a compass. Appreciate them for doing that. Appreciate them for doing that. And use what they're building and complete the work. Just walk, use it. You, you know that there is a moral compass and it's supposed to point up. 
So well then get aligned and, sh and then be happy. Be happy and demonstrate how happy you are that you found the thing and thank them for giving you the model of a compass. Expound to them, give them thanks, let them know, grandpa, thank you for everything you instilled into my folks or my family or me because I was able to use that system to get properly aligned and now I am super blessed. Likewise over here, thank you mom and dad for giving me the compass you did. I know that you gave it to me in love. Thank you for keeping me alive, giving me all the opportunities I did have for not throwing me in the ditch like the Spartans or not you know, casting me off the pyramid like 70 million people in the United States could have had happened to them. Thank you, I love you. I'm gonna go and be super happy. And that's all you got to do, man. You don't need to, you do not yell at them. And you don't, you don't resent them for handing you a compass that just, they didn't know. They did not see from their perspective. They, they actually did sense it enough to continuously navigate from one side to the other and swap. And so did you when you ran away from your hippie parents and went straight back into this, I need all the money and I need to work hard with work ethic so that my kids can have a good life. Yeah, well, see, you're sitting over here just like your grandparents did. You need to navigate over here. I know you know this exists. I'm telling you. You got to be separate. That's what the word holy means, is to separate yourself from this and this. And then once that happens, I'm telling you, it'll be pretty glorious. All right? If you're tracking, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. Say only truly loving things, not bullshit from over here. No lobbing stuff from here, like an idiot. No lobbing stuff from here to the hippies. Ah, oh, stupid hippies, all oh, these other guys, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. If you're aligned, comment. <laughs> okay? All right, rock and roll, Rex out.